In this problem, we're told to calculate the height of a cliff if it takes 2.35 seconds for a rock to hit the ground when it is thrown straight up from a cliff with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. B, how long would it take for the same rock to reach the ground if it was thrown straight down with the same speed? Right, so these A and B are going to require different drawings. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw A first, and then we'll do B after it. Right, so what's happening in A? So essentially what's going to happen is we have this rock at the top of a cliff. Right, it's going to be thrown uh, with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. Right, and keep in mind it's going upwards. Right, and then it's going to go up, 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 and then eventually it's going to stop and go all the way down to the bottom of this cliff. Right, and we know the time it's going to take is 2.35 seconds. Right, and what we're trying to find for A is the height of the cliff. So essentially what we want to find is delta y. Right, because if it starts here at the top of the cliff and we can find at the bottom, delta y is essentially, or the absolute value of delta y is going to be how high the cliff is. Right, so we know that information. So next, what we always like to do is write down the given. So what do we know? So we know the initial velocity is 8 meters per second. And so keep in mind when you do problems like this, you want to label uh, things with a negative or plus depending on the direction. So since it's 8 meters per second going upwards, we want to keep it positive. We say up is positive, down is negative. So the initial velocity is 8 meters per second. Uh, the time doesn't have a direction, right? So it's just 2.35 seconds. And then there's another variable that they don't give you, right? But you're just supposed to know, which is acceleration. And so acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. In this case, though, it's going downwards, right? Because acceleration, uh, the force of gravity is going to accelerate it downwards at uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. But since it's down, it's negative, right? So, right, this was positive because it's upwards. And then this one's going to be negative because it's going down. So those are basically the variables we're given. And so what we can do is since we have three of them, we can solve for delta y, right? So all we got to do is use kinematics and we can solve for the change in y. So we have v sub zero, we have t and we have a. And so if you look at the equations, uh, these say delta x, just pretend they're delta y, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, we're going to be using equation three, right? Because we have v sub zero, we have t and we have a, meaning we have all the variables to solve for it. So it's delta y equals v sub zero times t plus one half a t squared. So all we got to do is just plug in. So v sub zero is eight times t, which is 2.35, plus 1 half, times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, and then multiply by t squared, so 2.35 squared. So what you want to do now is just calculate this. So a times 2.35, or 8 times 2.35, uh, plus 0.5 times minus 9.8, right? And then times 2.35 uh, squared. And so when you go ahead and do this, what you're going to get, right, you're going to get that it equals minus, so the Q minus is delta Y, right? So delta Y is minus 8.26025. So uh, you can just round this to minus 8.26 if you'd like. But keep in mind, this is the change in Y. So it starts here, right? From the beginning where it starts to the end, is gonna, it's going to go down minus 8.26 meters, right? But keep in mind, uh, it's negative, but we take the absolute value, right? Because... It means it goes down that, which means the cliff is just going to be the positive value. So your answer to uh, the first part, basically how tall the cliff is, it's 8.26 meters. So that's going to be 8.26 meters. That's going to be the height or your answer to A. So now what we're going to want to do is do B, right? So B is a little bit different. Uh, I'm just going to redraw the same cliff. Uh, we know the height now, right? So it's going to be the same cliff, right? 8.26 meters. But in this case, we're saying how long would it take to reach the ground if it was thrown straight down with the same speed? So instead of being thrown up this time like this, the initial velocity is actually going to be thrown straight down. So instead of it going like this, it's basically just going to just go straight down, essentially, like this. And so we're going to hit the ground, right? So instead of the initial velocity right, being 8 meters per second, what it's going to be is negative 8, right? Because it's going downwards, just like the last one was upwards, so it was positive, this one's going to be downwards because it's negative. So if we write down the given, we know v sub 0 is negative 8 meters per second. Uh, we know the change in y now, right? And so the change in y is negative, right? I'm not putting the positive, right? Because keep in mind, when you do kinematics, you want delta y, not the height. So it's really minus 8.26 meters because it goes down that much. Uh, and then we know the acceleration, right? The acceleration doesn't change. It's still minus 9.8 meters per second squared right? because it's going down. And so we have v sub 0, we have delta y, and we have a. And so the only one that's going to be left is t now. Right, so what we can do is go ahead and solve for t. So that's what we're going to do. So how long is it going to take? Uh, we just want to plug it into one of the equations. So notice we have v sub 0, we have uh, delta y, we have a. And so the equation we're going to be using is uh, this one right here. So delta x, the same one we used in the last one, delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. Right, but instead of solving for delta y, like in the last one, we're actually going to be solving for t. So delta y is minus 8.26 which equals v sub 0, which is minus 8, times t 
uh, plus one half times a, which is minus 9.8 times t squared. And so uh, let's just go ahead and manipulate this a bit. So still minus 8.26 equals minus 8t. Uh, one half times minus 9.8 is minus 4.9t squared. And so what you should notice is if we move these to the other side, right? I'm just moving them over. So it's going to be 4.9t squared plus 8t minus 8.26 equals zero. This is quadratic form, right? So you can use the quadratic equation to solve this. I'm not going to go over to do that because uh, I think you should know how to do that by now. But I think the easier way of just solving it is by taking this formula, right? Because we want to find t. That's what we want, right? And so what you can do is just plug this into your calculator. So just plug in 4.9 uh, t squared plus 8t and then minus 8.26, right? So just graph this uh, by plugging it in, right? And when you do that, you're going to get uh, a curve, right? And so basically what you want to find is basically the t value when it crosses through the x-axis, right? That's basically what you do with quadratic, right? You find where it crosses through the x and or the x-axis, right? You're finding the x value where it does that. And when you do this, you're going to get a positive and negative value, but obviously time can only be positive. So your answer is going to be the one that crosses through the positive, uh, on the positive side. So when you do this uh, and solve, uh, you're going to get t equals 0.717, right? So just look where it crosses through the x on the positive side, and you get uh, 0.717, and then it's going to be seconds, obviously, right? Because this is time. So 0.717 uh, seconds, that's going to be how long it takes it to... Uh, reach the ground, right? So if it's thrown with this velocity down, it's going to be 0.1 or 0.717 seconds. That's going to be your answer to B. Uh, this was your answer to A. And yeah, so these are your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.